We've got the general, we've got the new nooks and crannies. You made it. You made it. Welcome to Basford. Come through. We're in New Basford at the moment outside on a nice day. Uh, the home of the Python Club. Uh, we're here with the media group to do uh, a documentary about what the Python Club is about, how we're supporting Nottingham. So the Python Club is about helping supporting young people, living a positive life. And, and we're like saying to the young people, look, let's do some football. Let's go and do some boxing. Let's hit some pads. Let's go to the gym. Let's go for some fitness. Yeah, let's get something positive. Yeah, you want a job? Let's hook you up with one. They have to understand this, that the lifestyle that they might be living is not leading a good way. We are seeing young people across Nottingham and across the country falling down the wrong paths. And we are here to guide them, support them, and empower them to be great. Right now, Nottingham is having a spate of knife crimes over the last few years. Just not, not just Nottingham, nationally. Why is that? We need to address the reasons why that's happening. We also need to look ourselves in the mirror and understand if we're doing enough. First tonight, the number of stabbings in this region has risen sharply. Well, more than half of those crimes left victims with injuries. And there's been a steady increase in knife point robberies too. We can reveal that more than 50 people have been stabbed to death across the East Midlands in the last four years. What you'll never get out of your head is seeing a mother crying and a cry that you've never heard before, the cry that reaches down into your soul. We've seen that too many times in Nottingham. We need to stop this now. We need to come against the forces that are sending our young people down the wrong paths. We're about that battle, and it is life or death. It's not nine to five. It's every day, 24 seven. This is a forgotten area. Like a lot of areas across the country, it gets forgotten about. So it's really important that the Python Club really hit the streets and speak to the young people, engage the young people where they are. And that's what we're doing today. It's what we do every day. It's so important that we find the young people where they are because a lot of these young people might not venture out of the areas that they're living in. So it's really important that we go to them, we find them. And like I touched on earlier on, sometimes you might have to pull them out of the bad situations that they might be in. You know, they get involved in the wrong crowd and these people don't care about you, mate. Yeah, so we do. So that's why we want to find you. Don't worry, we're not going to film your beanie. Don't worry, you all look lovely though, the hair looks nice. No, your hair looks nice. I, what did I say first? Hair looks nice. Hey, I, look at you, I didn't realise who it was just there. We're, start, we're setting up a football academy at Heathfield, which is not too far from you, is it? We're setting up a little football thing there for three to 12 year olds. And it's going to be proper coaching and stuff. I think you'll like that if you're, if you're interested. Think about it, I'll give you a flyer. Well, we have to go back a bit while, why it started. I was actually a police officer for 10 years in Nottingham. And I kind of saw firsthand how young people um, got into trouble, basically. And it could have been easily uh, diverted into something positive. Uh, and obviously, I enjoyed it in the police. The police was about being proactive. I wanted to help people before they got into trouble. I wanted to help my community. Because I've got kids myself. I want my kids to grow up in a, in a community and in a world that's got respect, that's got manners, that's got discipline, where we're, everyone's trying to work together for a common good. That's why it's important to me. Listen, we're, we're people on this, on this earth that we want to try and make a difference. We want to try and leave a legacy that people can follow and, and, and celebrate. And the Python Club and me personally want to do that. So listen, even around this street here, there's a hell of a lot of families that the Python Club during COVID have been supporting. Yeah, but they support us as well. It's not like, hey, we're the saviour, let's come support you. They support us as well. They show us love, they show, they show respect. They, they, they trust us to bring their kids to some of our sessions at boxing, maybe do some music. We're on a very big road where we are right now. The community wants to do something different. The community want to be positive, And that's why the Python Club are here. <laughs> I was born on the 1st of January 1980 to a single mom who worked in social services. She was a, she was a great worker and she also uh, campaigned for anti-apartheid issues in South Africa whilst living in London. But cut a long story short, it was tough growing up in a single mom, a single household. You know, my mom tried her best. Obviously, she was magnificent, but I sometimes gravitated to the wrong kind of individuals that kind of took me into the wrong situations. 
And it took people supporting me and coming into my life to help and support me get into a better kind of place. Prior to coronavirus, obviously the Python Club were running three or four activities a day, six days a week, in all different areas of Nottingham to really continue to inspire our young people. We might have been doing football, boxing, music sessions. We might just be sitting down with a young person talking to them about life and how we can help them. Now coronavirus is here and everyone had to lock down, isolate, can't be around each other. People are confused, a high rate of suicides. People are losing their livelihoods, their jobs. It's a hard, hard time at the moment that our communities are facing. And in, in these inner city areas, they're facing it really hard. So it's even more important that the Python Club and other organisations come together and be strong and resolute during these hard times. Provide our community with whatever they need when it comes to food and resources, medication, prescriptions. We drop our sports equipment as arts and crafts to keep them active at home. Just this week alone, we dropped off 45 bikes. That's magnificent. I've got a great team of people that are pushing forward for us, but more needs to be done. Our people, our families, our young people are struggling. They're in a world of pain sometimes, and the Python Club wants to help them through that. Yes, Wisdom. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. How you doing? Imagine, imagine, imagine. You've got your bike, you got your bike now, you've got your gloves. Mm. Keep active, yeah. positive things. Yeah. We've known Wisdom for a couple of years. He's a great role model for the community. The reason why we're dropping off things for him is we want to continue to keep him active. We want him to continue to help the other young people that he's helping. Because even before I gave him some gloves and stuff, he was supporting younger generations. And I love what I saw. And, and all jokes aside, that's why I've given him all this stuff so he can continue that. And he's got his bike to get around in, and he's got his punching bag at the back to keep himself fit as well. He's a strong lad, he's a big lad. You wouldn't want to mess with him in the ring. Uh, and it's just positive, positive moves as well. So it's about helping each other, and that's what we do. I am Nigerian. My dad is Nigerian. Your dad's Nigerian? Yeah, my dad is Nigerian. I told Wisdom. Oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, but I, I've not seen him since I was a very small boy. Uh, my stepdad yeah. is South African, South African, and he raised me. Oh, that's but great. I like Wisdom. Oh, Your son is a good man for the community yeah. and that's why we've given him all this stuff for free. I think he's on his, definitely on the right path, yeah, yeah. yeah, because he's a good luck, he's working now, right. he's on the right path, but I like I say... You also need to know the kind of friend he go with. That's the main thing, because a lot of these friends, they don't care about us, they don't care about wisdom, they just want to use them to do whatever, and if wisdom gets himself arrested, they don't care. Yeah. If he gets stabbed, they don't care. Yeah. We care, your dad cares. Yeah. Who's this young man? Is he your son? Friend oh, friends of wisdom as well. Nice right. seeing you. All right, sir. Okay, bye. I'll see you later. Enjoy. I always saw myself as being a professional footballer. And whilst living in the UK, I was doing really well at football. But like I said, my behaviour didn't match. My mum met somebody that really showed me about manners and discipline and took me to South Africa to show me what life is really about. And, and that moment in my life when I was 14 years old is what changed me. So I was in Africa for eight years. It was a really crazy experience because obviously I, I arrived at the height uh, just when Nelson Mandela was coming out of prison. So obviously I saw the devastating effect of apartheid and I saw how people like Nelson Mandela united the country. My first place I lived in was Soweto. And Soweto's a shanty town with wooden houses. People have got no money. But it, I really, really saw firsthand how people are living with no money and how lucky and fortunate I was living in the UK. And it was a rude awakening. It humbled me. I understood that I wasn't such a big man and I understood what was important. It changed me into being a person that wanted to be a positive for the community, wanted to be a role model for my mum, for my family and myself. And I was really grateful for those times. Hello, is it Lauren? Yes, hi. Hi, my name is Ben from the Python Club. I believe you may have a bike for us. I do, yes. Oh, back, thank you, thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much. Wow, it's amazing. No, it's beautiful. Thank you so much, Lauren. You're really, really kind. I'm going to take it to my car. Thank you, Lauren. Okay. Thank you so much.
when I grew up, yeah, I didn't have too many male role models I looked up to until my stepdad came into my life and he showed me what a man's supposed to be and how a man's supposed to treat people. Taught me about respect and discipline and love. And a lot of these young people maybe miss out on that. I'm not saying they don't get it at home necessarily, but they sometimes don't. And the Pi Food Club and other organisations that work on the streets give them that. And we'll be down by the river. Mm. This is one of our sponsors, the Radford Road Pharmacy. Really great for us, amazing. So the ambition for the Piper Club is to move to different areas within the country. Um, I've identified Sheffield, London, and we're looking at one other as well. All those cities obviously have the similar issues that we have in Nottingham. We want to help improve the lives of young people in Parliament, as I've said. Some of the initiatives and ideas and ambitions for Nottingham specifically is that we've got a hub down here. We've got given a community centre, not the one that we're here with today, another one. And that hub is going to be a hub of opportunities. That hub is going to be opportunities and hope. We're going to be providing coaching, education, employment and accreditation from this, this community hub for all our community. This is real change and this is what we're about. You know, we don't just talk about it, we do it. Because there's lots of people that chat a good game and not do much. We're about action. And that hub is going to deliver young people into a much more positive way of life. And they're going to have real tangible qualifications and accreditations that they can use for the future. Thank you.